What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and achieving at least one of your goals today. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the 2023 Hyundai Ioniq 6 SEL. Huge thank you to Angel and Shaq over at Safford Brown Hyundai of Manassas, Virginia for allowing me to do this video for you guys today. If you are interested in this particular Ionic 6 or any Hyundai product, I'll be sure to have Angel and Shaq's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. All right, it is a cloudy and relatively humid day today, which is kind of surprising, but I take it as a win because the past couple months have been really, really hot here and humid. So to not have the sun out is definitely a win here today. But just like I always do, first, let's talk about the exterior and the performance. So like I said, this is a 2023 Hyundai Ioniq 6 SEL, and this particular one has been painted in transmission blue. One of the first things I wanted to say at the beginning of this video is that for 2023, the Ionic 6 is an all new model to the Hyundai lineup, and there are four trim levels to choose from. This one is one trim level under the top trim level. So top trim level is the limited. This is the SEL again, just one slot below the top trim level. But we're going to start at our headlights, then we'll work our way down and around the side into the back end of the exterior, and then we'll work our way into the interior. So starting over here at our lights as standard with the SEL, you get LED projector headlights with high beam assist, as well as LED daytime running lights and LED turn signals. You also get a black headlight bezel that accents all of your black trim pieces here on the exterior very, very nicely. Taking a step back and to the left a little bit, let's take in the entire front end. So you may be able to see you have your Hyundai logo located at the center of your front bumper. And then coming down just a little bit, you can see you get a gloss black trim piece that extends across the entire bumper and you get four integrated parking sensors into that gloss black piece. I'll point out those parking sensors now. That's one, that's two, that's your third one, and then you have your fourth one right there. Now taking a step back just a little bit. Again, you also get gloss black outer grills on both sides of your front bumper. One right there, one on this side as well. And then you get some gray accent colored trim on those uh, outer grills here. So you get that gray accent trim. Again, another gloss black trim piece there. And then the observant viewer may be able to note that you get another gloss black trim piece that connects your lower bumper or lower grills as well. And then at the center of your front bumper, you can see there's kind of like those cutouts right there. Those are your active grill shutters, basically to keep the battery cool and at a optimal operating temperature. So it's pretty cool when you turn the vehicle on, these grill shutters open up. And then if you were wondering about the ground clearance, you get 5.6 inches of ground clearance with the Ionic 6. Now working our way down the side, you can see you get a side marker light right there. And then these are the standard and only wheel option and they are a 20 inch machine face with black pocket wheel. And they are wrapped in 24540 Pirelli P0 all season tires. Give you a view of the tread pattern on these tires here real quick. There you go, it's kind of like the best that I can do. And you can see all these like little divots here on the wheels. Apparently what I've been told is that all of that helps with the aerodynamic efficiency of the Ionic 6. Now, taking a step back, here is a front three quarter angle, working our way into our side view mirrors. You get body color mirror caps with integrated turn signals. As standard, these mirrors are heated, manual folding, power adjustable, and you get your blind spot monitoring on the upper left hand side of your driver side mirror and on the upper right hand side of your passenger side mirror. One thing that I thought was kind of cool is that you can see you get these six pieces or like just these six boxes here um, for your integrated turn signals and just pay attention because there's six things pretty much all over the vehicle and that's a nice little easter egg basically this is the ionic six so that's why you have six things right there now taking a step back let's take in the side profile of this vehicle i don't know where i stand with the styling because i don't hate it but i don't love it at the same time it's kind of interesting and it kind of reminds me back here of like a Volkswagen bug, like an older one, like a 60s, 70s, with that teardrop kind of shape. Again, that's for the aerodynamic efficiency. So I don't love it, but I don't hate it. And as time goes on, I'm starting to like it a little bit more, which is kind of interesting because when I first saw it, I was like, oof. But as time has gone on, and I've spent a little bit of time with it, I'm starting to like it more and more, which is kind of interesting. But you may be able to see, you get black window trim as well as body color auto retracting door handles with keyless access. So right now I have my key fob in my pocket. If I press that button right there, the side view, or you can see it, the door handles are now flush 
just like a Lamborghini Huracan, but when you come up to it, you press that button right there, you can see all of them pop right back out. And then all the way at the side profile of where your rockers are, you get these satin black rocker panels. They kind of have like an aerodynamic design to them. There's a kind of another view of what they look like down there. And then working our way to the back, this is something that I found pretty interesting, is that you get a translucent shark fin antenna. So if you look in there, you can see all of the different, you know, computer chips and all the kind of stuff that goes along with the antenna. So I think that's pretty cool. And it kind of has like a, you know, um, smoked finish to it. It's just kind of cool to be able to see what's going on inside that antenna. Now, here's a rear three quarter angle. That's what it looks like from the back here. Give you another shot of the roof line right here. You can see that teardrop shape design. And then obviously, just like any other sedan, um, you do get a rear window defogger as well as a gloss black deck lid spoiler with your integrated LED third brake light right here. Just beneath that, you have your Hyundai logo. And then you get another spoiler. This is kind of like your baby spoiler and it is body color. That's a closer look at that. That's what that looks like there. And then just beneath that, you have your backup camera. And then you can see another six boxes right there. If you press on that, your lift gate will open up. It is power opening and closing, which is always nice. Now taking a look at what we got going on back here. This is your tire mobility kit. So you do not get a spare tire. So you get the tire mobility kit in lieu of a spare tire. And then this particular vehicle has been optioned with the $120 cargo tray, which is what this is right here. It's basically like a carpeted floor mat for your cargo area. And then this also has been optioned with the $210 carpeted floor mats. So this is a closer look at what they look like. They say Ionic 6 on them, and again, they are carpeted. And then last but not least, the last option that we have back here is the $55 cargo net. Cargo net right here. Get a little bag. You can set what you need to uh, down in there. And then underneath this, there's not really much going on. It was kind of a pain to lift up, but a little bit of storage space down in there. That is where your charger is. And really, other than that, kind of about it for what we got going on here at the back end. Like I said, this is power up and down. So if you press that button right there, the deck lid will drop just like that. And then you can see you have your white Ionic 6 lettering beneath your backup camera. And then you do get LED taillights back here as well. Taking a step back, you get a gloss black and gray rear valence. So you can see this piece right here is gloss black, but then you get that gray accent trim here. So basically this piece and then all the way at the bottom. And then you also get four parking sensors back here total as well. That's one, two, three, and four. And then one more thing I wanted to go over um, is that you also have your reverse lights back here, but they're mounted low right there and over there. I'll put it on screen what they look like when they're on. And then there is one more thing here on the exterior, and that is that you do have your charge port right here. Again, another six little boxes. This is the Ionic 6. So I do believe you have to open that up from the interior or if I unlock the vehicle, if the vehicle is unlocked, let's see if we can open it up. So I will turn or unlock the vehicle. See, it's power opening and closing, and it does accept level one, level two, and fast DC charging. That's one charge port up top there. That's the other charge port. And then you can see how much battery the vehicle has. And if you press on that button right there, the charge port will close back up. But let me know what you think of the 2023 Ionic 6 in the comments down below. I wanna know what your opinion is on the styling. Do you guys like it? Do you guys not like it? Again, let me know in the comments below. I actually am genuinely curious what you think. But with that stuff out of the way, let's move into performance. Pop and open that hood reveals that 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack that works with two electric motors. Total output is 320 horsepower and 446 pound feet of torque. It is mated to a direct drive transmission for a zero to 60 time in four and a half seconds. And if you were wondering about range, you can achieve up to 270 miles of range with all wheel drive. One thing that I did fail to mention on the exterior part of the video is that you do get a little bit of storage space in here, um, you know, 
for smaller items. I would say, you know, you have about four inches of depth here and another maybe four inches of depth here, but then you get like an inch of depth here. So just be mindful of what you set up here. Uh, maybe you can set a couple, you know, ball caps or something like that. But other than that, there's really not that much storage space underneath the hood. But if you're enjoying the video so far today, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. I'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot get there without your support. If you've enjoyed this video in any sort of capacity so far, please take a second, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and maybe leave a comment. All of those things look really good for my channel in the YouTube algorithm. But with that stuff out of the way, let's move into the interior. Moving on into the interior, like I mentioned a little bit ago in the video, you do get keyless access. So all you gotta do is have your key fob in your pocket. Walk up to the vehicle, press right here, and the door handles will pop out. Now you can have access into the interior. You can also lock the vehicle by pressing on that little square right there. And now the vehicle is locked. So now if I try to open it up, it's not going to open it up. And now I did wanna show you a couple of the functions on the key fob. So that's your lock function, that's your unlock function. This is like your preconditioning for your interior. It's basically like remote start. And then all the way at the bottom down here, you have your panic function. And then on the side of the key fob, if you press and hold on that, that will either open and or close your trunk. But again, moving on into the interior, pressing the unlock button, the uh, door handles do pop out. And now we have access into the interior. So now let's take a look at what the driver's side door panel has to offer. So this may look like it is like a soft touch material, but it's actually a uh, you know black plastic type of material, but it feels soft. This is kind of an interesting uh, texture um, here on because it feels soft, but it is satin black plastic. Then you get a satin chrome looking door handle. You may be able to see that blue right there. That is the ambient lighting. And then this upholstery is called HTEX trimmed seats so I would assume that this is some a uh, h -Tex trim trimming right here nicely padded armrest this is what your speaker surround looks like it's kind of like a uh, silver speaker surround but your speaker is only right here as you can see then you get a good amount of miscellaneous storage space at the bottom of your door panel it's kind of about it for that. Then you get a satin black Ionic 6 door sill right there. You also get a power adjustable front driver's seat, but the front passenger seat is manually adjustable. And then this is what the seats look like. That's a closer look at them. Now let's step on into the interior and let's see what we got going on in here. So this is an EV, so you're not gonna get any startup noises really. Um, but to turn the vehicle on, all you gotta do is have your key fob in your pocket Push your foot on the brake and then push to start here. And then you get that nice little chime uh, when you turn the vehicle on. Now, one thing I wanted to kind of go over right off the bat is that you can see you get these rubber floor mats. So those are a $220 option and those are the all weather mats. But let's start down here. We'll walk our way through the dash and then into those rear seats. So coming down here, that is to dim your gauge cluster as well as your backlit buttons. That is to brighten your gauge cluster as well as your backlit buttons. Pressing on this button right here is gonna pop open your charge port and then come down a little bit. That is to open and or close your trunk. Just to the right of that, that is to turn your traction control system on or off. And then just above that, this is your electronic parking brake. Pull out to engage it. If you wanted to disengage it, you have to push your foot on the brake, push on that again, and now the parking brake is disengaged. And then to the right of that, you have your side view mirror controls. One thing that I thought was kind of interesting is that uh, I am five foot nine and I do have a decent reach. Um, but when I try to reach here, you kind of have to like pull your head back a little bit in order to get the right mirror setting. So it's kind of like a little bit of a reach rather than having it on your door panel. That was something that I noticed uh, right off the bat. So just keep that in mind, but those are your side view mirror controls there. And then to the right of that, you have a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. And what I mean by that is that the steering wheel will come towards you. The steering wheel will go away from you and then you can move the steering wheel up and down to your liking and then just lock it back in place by pushing back up on that little lever right there. Before we get any further, I wanna show you what the turn signal sounds like. So let's take a listen to that. That is what your turn signal sounds like. This is what your turn signal control stock looks like. Not only is this your turn signal control stock, this is also your high beam control stock and your headlight control stock. So twisting that all the way down, that is headlights off. 
Coming up one, that is headlights in the automatic position. Coming up one more time, that is parking lights on. And then all the way up top here, that is headlights in the always on position. And then again, that's how you turn your fog or uh, your uh, high beams on or off. You pull them. And then you can push forward. And then again, this does have high beam assist, which is automatic high beams. Taking a step back or zooming out just a little bit, you do get a leather wrapped steering wheel. And just like any other steering wheel, you have your horn at the center. So let's take a listen to it. That is what the horn sounds like on the Ionic 6. Now, one thing I wanted to point out um, in your horn area is that you can see you get these four little dots right here. So what I've been told is that this is Morse code for the letter H. Um, so, you know, Hyundai's logo is that letter H. Well, that is basically what that is in Morse code. Pretty cool. And they do light up. Uh, those little boxes do light up with LED lights right now. The ambient lighting is set to blue. And you can see these are blue, even though it comes up on camera as they are purple. But one other thing that's kind of cool uh, about this vehicle is that this does have the regenerative brake level control paddles. So basically these paddles here, if you uh, press this all the way, it says I pedal on. That is basically one pedal driving. So basically you can drive the vehicle with just the accelerator. So the more you let off the accelerator, the more the vehicle will break. So basically the more you accelerate, um, you know, obviously the more it accelerates, but if you just hold the pedal in the same position, it's basically gonna maintain speed. And when you start letting off, that's when the vehicle is gonna start resisting and it's basically gonna start breaking you. And then this paddle right here, this is gonna bring you in between your different levels. So you have level three, level two, level one, and off. Um, so basically, this is going to minimize the resistance um, you know, when you let off of the accelerator. So this is for your regenerative braking all the way to the right. Um, that is level zero. So now there's going to be no resistance when you let off the accelerator and it's just gonna coast like a gas powered vehicle does. But then coming over to here, you can go in between your different levels, level one, level two, level three, and I pedal on. Again, this is more resistance. This is less resistance when you let off the accelerator. That is how I can describe it to you who have never experienced what one pedal driving is. And I'll get into that on the driving portion of the video. But coming over to here, um, this is the Ionic 6 SEL. So you do get highway driving assist too, which includes adaptive cruise control with stop and go, leading vehicle distance technology, as well as lane centering. Basically, all that stuff adds to a semi-autonomous driving experience. So basically, this is going to drive you down the highway and it's going to keep you centered in the lane, but you just got to make sure that you're ready to grab onto the steering wheel when it says to grab onto the steering wheel. So it's not full autonomous driving, it's semi-autonomous driving. And those are your uh, basically adaptive cruise control settings on this side. And then pressing on this button right here is going to display some different information on your 12.3 inch digital driver display. Uh, I'll get into that in a second but anyways you can see this changes what's on that display again i'll get into that here in a second coming down just a little bit you have a few different drive modes so clicking on this button right here is going to bring you in between your different uh drive modes you got your eco mode your normal mode your sport mode your snow mode and then you also have a my mode um so right now that's eco that's normal and you can see the gauge cluster kind of changes what it looks like dependent on which drive mode you're in. You press and hold on that and then that puts you into snow mode um, and then that is what snow mode looks like. I would either normally keep it in uh, normal or sport mode because I like a little bit of a sporty driving experience. And then coming over to here, if you press on this mode button, it's gonna bring you into this screen here. So this is not set up yet, but basically if you press that mode button, it can bring you into either your Bluetooth audio stuff, your phone projection stuff, sound of nature usb all these different things you can set uh one of these and that will bring you uh into that thing basically on this screen over here so pressing on this can either bring you into all of these different things you just have to select one of them and then this kind of does a similar thing but this is basically like your favorite button and you can bring it into all of these different things so you can set it uh one of these functions for that button so you can reject a call you can change your hands-free calling device you can go into the voice memo you can reroute you can cancel the route uh radio you can turn the media on or off bring you into quiet mode or you can go to the ev screen again this is a customizable button. This is a customizable button. They are not set up yet. That is waiting for the owner of this vehicle to set up for these two different buttons here. Um, and then this is your volume control knob. This is gonna bring you into your phone stuff here on the screen over here. 
And then this is to go forward on a track. Pushing down on that is gonna go back on a track. So basically it switches you between uh, different songs or different radio stations, dependent on if you are in AM, FM, Bluetooth audio, stuff like that. Coming over here, this is your windshield wiper control stock. This is your transmission control stock pretty much. So if you go forward like that, that's gonna put you into drive. Pull back once, that's gonna put you into neutral. And then if you pull all the way down, that's gonna put you into reverse. If you wanted to go into park, you gotta push this P right there. We're pushing P and then that puts us back into park and then the parking brake is automatically engaged. Now, moving into this screen here again, this is the 12.3 inch digital driver display. Right now, I do believe we are in normal mode. So this is what normal mode looks like. Got your speed limit up top there, transmission status stuff, all of your different um, you know, driving assistance stuff up top here. That is the battery range. This is like the charge. That's your um, electronic emergency brake, odometer, more battery stuff, the ambient exterior temperature, the battery percentage, and then that is like for your regenerative braking paddle. So you can see as I click this, it's gonna go in between my different levels and then it's gonna put the eye pedal mode on. And then this is pretty cool. So basically the more throttle you give it, the more this will be highlighted, um, basically showing you, you know, how much power you're using and then which wheels are powering the vehicle forward. And again, clicking on this button right here is gonna bring you in between your different screens here. So this is gonna be another screen. This is like your driver assistant screen. Clicking that button again, you have the uh, accumulator info so if you scroll down that's gonna bring you into your drive information scroll down again uh, that will bring you into your after recharging and then you have your accumulated info and then clicking on that button one more time will bring you into either a compass one more time then you have this screen or your tire pressure screen and that's kind of about it for the different displays uh, on this screen here now working our way over to here this is another 12.3 inch screen, but this is the touch infotainment system with built-in navigation as well as wired Apple CarPlay and wired Android auto connectivity. I'll show you what the home screen looks like. This is basically like your home screen, got the date, got the time, got the music that's playing, the battery percentage, the range, and then that's kind of about it. Swipe over to the right. That will bring you into this screen so you can see all the different things on the screen here. Um, this is how you turn your heated seats on. You click there and then you can uh, turn your heated seats on. Three levels of adjustability with these heated front seats. Again, passenger also gets three levels of adjustability with the heated seat as well. X and back out of that, swiping over to here. Then you have these other different like apps basically. Uh, I'll show you what the radio screen looks like because why not? I'll turn that down. Um, but yeah, then you can go between different sources, FM, AM, Sirius XM. Then your home button is up top here. So that's what I keep, so I'm gonna go into maps, cancel. If I press that, that's basically my home button bringing me back into my home screen. Um, really kind of about it for what we got going on. There is one cool thing that I did wanna point out. So you can go into HD radio data, you can go into your Doppler radar, and it's basically, you can see a little bit of light rain over there. Um, pretty cool. And it also shows you the traffic and stuff. So I think that's pretty sweet. X and back out of that. Kind of about it for what we got going on there. Last but not least, this is your climate stuff. And then I might as well show you the EV stuff. This is an EV after all. So this is what your EV screen looks like. Uh, basically, if I turn the climate on, you can see the more that I bring the fan up, the less the range is. You can see that. And then the more the fan goes down, the more the range is. So basically with the climate system off, you get 178 miles of range. When I turn the climate system on, this is my third fan speed. You basically get 167 miles of range. So I think that's pretty cool uh, that it can forecast the range dependent on how much electricity you're using with like the HVAC system and stuff like that. Then you got your time, you got the date and uh, kind of about it for what we got going on on that screen. Come down a little bit, you get four HVAC vents on the dash. One, that's two, that's three, that's four. Then that is your hazard button. You get an ambient lighting strip right there. Right now I have the color set to blue. Then you have some physical buttons down here. So that's your volume control knob. This will bring you into your map on screen. This is gonna bring you into your navigation, basically point of interest stuff. This is your media stuff here. Then you can go into a favorites. You just gotta set your favorites here. Um, and then this is your tuning control right here. You can go between your different either radio stations on the XM or you can go uh, in between your different songs if you're on the Bluetooth audio system. That's gonna pop up your backup camera. And then all the way over here, that is to turn your parking sensors on or off. This does 
uh, get dual zone climate control. This is what your climate control system looks like. Temperature controls for your driver, temperature controls for your passenger. And when I turn it on, it displays the temperature there. And then that is your fan speed. So the more fan speed I go, it obviously increases the number. And then if you, you know, go past uh, one, that's gonna turn the HVAC system off. As standard with the SEL, you get a wireless charging pad. This is where your wireless charging pad is. And then you can see my phone is charging. And then to the right of that, you get a USB-A port, lets you know that your phone is charging here. Two cup holders right here. Coming down, allow, this is your uh, lock controls for the vehicle. Then you get automatic up and down windows for your front windows, but you do not get automatic up or down windows for the back. This button right here is to restrict your passenger window privileges. And then this is auto vehicle hold. So let's say you're stuck in traffic. You're tired of holding your foot down on your brake by yourself. If you engage that, the vehicle will hold you in place with its braking system. And then when you hit the accelerator, it will start to move forward again. Pretty cool system. And then you get a nicely padded armrest opening this up. Down in here, you can see you get two USB-C ports. You can set your key fob right there if you wanted to. And then you get a little bit of miscellaneous storage space down here. Uh, but really, you know, you might want to be mindful of what you set down in here because there's really not all that much space. Um, I would say you probably have, you know, eight inches of depth down in there. Uh, but again, really not that much storage space down in there. Coming over to here, you do not get a lockable lower glove box, but you get a decent amount of storage space in your glove box. This is an iPhone 14 Pro Max for size reference of what you can set in there. Closing that back up, auto dimming rear view mirror with your home link down here. So if you have a house with three different garage bays, you can open up those three different garage bays individually with those three different buttons there. Then you get your roadside assistance stuff up top here that lets you know if your passenger airbag is on or off. Obviously, driver gets a light, front passenger gets a light. Those are the two individual buttons. This button right here is gonna turn on all the interior dome lights as you may be able to see. And then this is basically your light setting. So when you open up the door, do you want the lights to turn on or not? That would be the button you would press. Now when I open up the door, the lights will turn on. If I press that button again, now when I open up the door, the lights do not turn on. So that is basically what that button does right there. And then coming over to here, this is what your visor looks like. Um, you get a vanity mirror with a vanity light and a clip you can set money, registration, or any paper product. Now let's see if this slides forwards and backwards, which it does, which is always nice. Opu panel up top here. Same thing, another Opu panel over there. Now there are a couple things I wanted to go over. Uh, basically of what you get standard. Um, so you get a wireless charging pad, you get heated front seats, dual zone climate control, a power driver seat, and et cetera. Um, a couple safety features, you get the front and rear parking sensors, the forward collision avoidance assist, lane keep assistant, blind spot monitoring. Now I'm gonna throw the entire window sticker on screen. You can take a look at whatever you want to, the safety stuff, the optional stuff, and everything that you get standard. But basically I am just going to highlight the MSRP. So the MSRP of the way that this particular 2023 Hyundai Ioniq 6 SEL long range all wheel drive is $52,920. I do want to show you what we got going on in these rear seats before I move into the driving portion of the video. So let's see what the rear has to offer. So as you may be able to tell, you get one of those fancy door handles back here, just like what you get in the Lambo Huracan. Nicely padded armrest here, satin black plastic, same door handle as what you'd find in the front. You do not get automatic up or down windows back here. Spot you could set a phone, little bit of miscellaneous storage space down at the bottom of your door panel. Ionic 6 door sill right there. This is what the rear seats look like. You may be able to sell, uh, tell because you don't have a transmission tunnel. All of this storage space back here, or leg space back here is flat, which is something that I do like about electric vehicles. But I do wanna show you how far these windows back here roll down. So you can see they nearly go all the way down. They stop right here, as you can see. Now I'm gonna close that door. You get a seat back pocket behind the driver's seat. You get a seat back pocket behind the passenger seat. You get two HVAC vents, two USB-C ports, and a spot you could set a phone or a hand sanitizer down there. Opu panel, a spot you could set your dry cleaning. You got a dome light. Same Opu panel over there, except you don't have a spot you could set your dry cleaning. Opening this up, you get a armrest with two cup holders. And then again, I am adjusted behind myself. I am five foot nine. I've got plenty of knee room. Here's another view of that 
my knee room, my leg room. And then for my headroom, I'd say I have probably an inch or two inches of headroom left over. Um, again, five foot nine. But you know, we've talked about the exterior, we've talked about the performance, and now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior of the Ionic 6. So I wanna see what this thing's like to drive as I'm assuming you guys do as well. So I'll see you guys in the driver's seat. All right, and now on to the driving portion of the review. Here's Floored. Definitely puts you back in your seat. And right now I have the iForce on, um, which is, or iPedal, excuse me, on, which is, again, one pedal driving. So watch what happens when I let off of the accelerator. See how it begins to slow down? I am not hitting the brake, but we're coming to a stop. As I click this paddle over here, it's going to lessen that resistance. So again, we're on level three. It's still slowing me down. It's just not slowing me down as much as when I pedal drive was on. Now I'm on level two. Now it's even less resistance. And as I keep hitting this paddle, it's gonna be less and less resistance, um, which is basically going to put me, like if I click all the way to level zero, now, Basically, when I let off of the accelerator, it's basically just going to let me coast again like a gas powered vehicle would. So now it's just going to feel like a regular driving experience, like I'm driving a gas powered vehicle and you're not going to feel any really resistance with the regenerative braking system. Um, I personally like the regenerative braking system just because it captures the energy and then it also makes the driving experience just a little bit easier so you don't have to go from gas to brake from gas to brake so you can see I let off of the accelerator and now we're just coasting to a stop as I hit this paddle you're gonna see we're gonna start slowing down more and more and then with the eye pedal on we really begin to slow down and it's kind of like I just hit the brake so that is basically the uh, what these paddles here do uh, and I wanted to demonstrate that you know at the beginning of this video I do have eye pedal drive uh, on right now which again is basically the one pedal driving system and it's something that I like to use when I'm driving a electric vehicle because again it just makes the driving experience a little bit easier Take a listen to what this vehicle sounds like at 35 miles an hour uh, with not with me not talking. You can see it is respectably quiet in here. And as I go over these speed bumps, I'm just gonna gun it so you can see just the insane low end torque of this vehicle. So we're gonna go over these speed bumps rather slow. And now I'm floored. I mean, it really puts you back in your seat and it accelerates really, really quickly. Um, and I think honestly, the acceleration will shock you. Uh, at least it shocked me. I was surprised just by how quick this thing got up and went. And I was like, this thing is really, really quick. Um, and I've also noticed, you know, I've had this vehicle out for a little bit of time now and I haven't really burned through that much charge, which is awesome. Um, you know, that is something that, you know, if you're looking at getting one of these and it's gonna be maybe like your daily driver or something like that, I think that is very, very important, um, you know, because if you're going to be using this as a daily driver, you know, you want it to have good range. And this thing definitely has a uh, pretty good range, at least from what I've experienced so far, especially at the price point of this vehicle. You know, $52,000, I know that is a lot of money. Believe me, I know that is a lot of money. However, you know, when it comes to EVs, it seems like EVs are just, they're expensive, you know what I mean? And for $52,000, I think you get a pretty nice EV driving experience wise. It's got the good torque. It's got a nice interior here with everything that you want. I do wish, however, and I think this was a mistake, I think Hyundai should have put wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto in this vehicle. I don't know why they didn't do it, but they didn't. Um, it's just, you know, one of those things. It is what it is but I am gonna do another little U-turn right here and we're gonna test the turning radius. So let's see how the turning radius is. Okay, that is actually a very, very good turning radius, um, you know, especially considering that this is all wheel drive. So it is a pass in my book turning radius wise. It is a pass in my book power wise because this thing is very, very quick. Um, got a train, Amtrak train going on back there. Uh, overall, very nice vehicle. Styling is subjective. I don't love it. I don't hate it. I don't know where I stand on the styling yet. Um, but it has grown on me. I will admit it has grown on me the time that I've spent with it. Um, I just, I don't love it yet. Um, but yeah, 
that's it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy the video, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. Like I said, I'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot get there without your support. So if you enjoyed this video in any sort of capacity, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. I'd really, really appreciate it. It looks very good for my channel in the YouTube algorithm with the thumbs ups the comments and the subscriptions so again from the bottom of my heart thank you very much but again that's it for today's video i will catch you all in the next one peace